Okay guys, so today we're going to be integrating another beautiful problem from the MIT Integration B, this time from this year's Integration B, the 2020 free competition. And so it looks like this. We're supposed to integrate x just 5 from 0 to 4. Okay, so first of all, what does x just 5 even mean? Well, this is just the binomial coefficient. It is, it is called x choose k because it also has something to do with combinatorics. I will do a video about it for sure, but basically x choose some kind of an n, let's say, is just going to be equal to x factorial divided by n factorial multiplied by x minus n factorial. It also shows up in the binomial theorem, all of that stuff. I'm bad at writing big parentheses, like huge parentheses, so this thing right here looks absolutely awful. Oh, you know, maybe I will try and make it a little bit better. Oh, something like, like this. It's a little bit better. I'm never symmetric. <laughs> I, I, I hate stuff like that. It's symmetric. And so, well, this integral we've got there, we can actually write it as just the integral, or even the integral, not just the integral, of x to the, x to the x factorial all over 5 factorial times x minus 5 factorial dx. And so this is the perfect place to introduce to you the gamma function. Joking. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm only joking. I would never try and do this way by the gamma. I mean, using the gamma function, it would be just about the awful pain in the ass, triple integral kind of stuff. So if you'd like to do it, I applaud you. Like, you know, leave your answer in the comments. I'm too lazy for that. So let me just, well, go further with my own lazy little solution. So there is a pretty interesting way that we can, a pretty interesting tree that we can use to rewrite this integral in a pretty lovely way. So first of all, what the factorial even is? I mean, if we're dealing with integers, <laughs> because if not, it gets tricky, but if we're dealing with integers, n factorial is equal n factorial is gonna be equal to the product of all of the integers up until the end itself, yeah? And so we've got the two factorial is gonna be one times two, three factorial is gonna be one times two times three, that's six, and so on and so forth. And what's pretty interesting about it? Well, if I were to take myself five factorial, which is equal to this one times two times three times four times five, and let's say a three factorial, which is equal to, as I've already said, one times two times a three, and I were to divide those guys by themselves, yeah? so five factorial by three factorial, it's gonna be equal to one times two times three times four times five over one times two times three. Well, what would that thing give me? Well, I would be able to just simplify, um, simplify to cancel out those ones, twos, threes, Basically, all of this stuff, well, the entire 3 factorial, because the 3 factorial just kind of is inside of the 5 factorial already. And what I would be left with would be just 5 times a 4. And I can generalize this thing to saying that whenever I'm pretty much just dividing factorials, so let's say an n factorial by n minus k factorial, so in this case, it was 5 factorial by 5 minus 2 factorial. What I will get is just n multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 2. I'm going to be multiplying those parentheses expressions up until I get to n minus k but plus 1. Because I'm dividing n minus k as well, so I will have to stop at n minus k plus 1. And in this case, well, I did stop at n minus k plus 1, 5 minus 2 plus 1 is 4, so 5 times 4, everything holds perfectly. And we can actually use this trick right there to, well, rewrite our integral that we've got right here. I mean, how can we do this? We can rewrite it as the integral between 0 and a 4, and I'm gonna pull the 1 over 5 factorial in front of the integral because it's just a constant of x times x minus 1 times x minus, not 4, x minus 2, x minus 3, and x minus 4, and it's going to be all dx. 
Yeah, and well, this is love because we don't have any weird gamma functions on integrate this. This is just a polynomial that we know how to integrate, but for the cat's sake, no human being in the right mind would be <laughs> would want to multiply this stuff out. And I'm surely not the person to do it, honestly. And I would like to show you guys a better way to solve this integral that does not require you to multiply out the quintic polynomial. That is with a USAP, a pretty interesting USAP that will actually make this far, far simpler. So I would like to, kind of out of the blue, but let's just do it, make a USAP such that you will be equal to, you will be equal, you are gonna be equal, <laughs> to x minus a two. And so du will be just the dx, bear with me for now. And so whenever x is equal to 0, you will be equal to negative 2, you will be equal to negative 2. And when x is equal to 4, you will be equal to positive 2, like this. And so what is this u sub gonna give us, bro? <laughs> well, the integral is gonna become 1 over, or maybe... I, can I take this? Oh yeah, was, no, 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 now it's better. 1 over 5 factorial from negative 2 up to 2 all over and I was gonna be uh, not all over but of um, u plus 2 that was the x then u plus 1 that was x minus 1 and now times u now times 1 my u minus 1 and then u minus a 2 that's gonna be all the u but now you see this guy this u minus 2 and this u plus 2 well these two combined these two multiply together are gonna just give us the difference of squares this u plus 1 and this u minus 1 are going to give us also a difference of squares, u squared minus 1. Lovely, because it is getting simpler and simpler and simpler to multiply this stuff out. And so now I'd like to just rewrite it as 1 5 factorial of integral from negative 2 up to 2, from negative 2 up to 2, of just u squared minus a 4, that's u plus 2 times u minus 2, times u squared minus 1, that's u plus 1 times u minus 1, that's all times u du. And now, well, multiplying this stuff out would be doable, I mean, it's still not perfect, because I have a better idea. You see, the nice thing is that whenever you have a function that is odd, which is that is, which is that this function is symmetric with respect to the origin of the xy plane. And so it kind of looks like this, let's say, like x cubed, maybe, yes, or something like this. And we're going to be integrating this function on a symmetric interval, interval that is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So something like negative 2 up to 2, negative 5 up to 5, negative pi up to pi, negative infinity up to infinity. Yeah, so we've got an interval like negative a up to a. You will see that those two areas from negative a up to zero and a up and zero up to a, the positive a, those are gonna have the same value. Those areas are gonna be the same, but with opposite signs. Because here we're gonna have an area that is under the x-axis, whereas here we're gonna have an area that is above the x-axis. And so those two arrows are gonna have, well, pretty much the same value, they're gonna have different signs. And so when we add them together, this integral between negative a up to a of our odd function f of x is gonna be equal to zero because those are gonna cancel each other out. And the nice thing is that this thing is odd. How do we know that? I mean, let me just denote our function as f of x. My f of x is going to be equal to, or maybe I, I, I do f of u, yeah? So u squared minus 1 times u squared minus 4 and times u. We know that f is odd whenever f of negative u is equal to negative f of u. Yeah, and so let's check if it's true. What is f of negative u? Well, that just uh, u, negative u squared is the same as u squared, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. Well, here as well, negative u squared is the same as u squared, so I'm gonna leave it like that. And now, negative u, I mean, this u changes to negative u, so we've got something like this. But this thing is equal to, I can just pull this negative sign, 
in front of this entire thing and just be left with basically negative u squared minus 1, u squared minus 4 times u. But this thing is the same as just saying that I'm negating f of u in the first place and that I'm multiplying f of u by negative 1 in the first place. So we get, lovely, that this stuff that we've got right there is odd. This is an odd function and so because our interval is symmetric with respect to the y-axis indeed, we've got that this integral is equal to a lovely zero. I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you next one.